The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 12th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary. One of the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, we do not make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, will go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com, but send it early, please. And in the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, I get all the U.S. indices trading in the upside. The Dow is up 106 points, 3 tenths of a percent. S&P up 4 tenths or 18. NASDAQ 106 tenths or 87. Russell 2000, 1 and a quarter percent, 24 points. Semis 1 and a quarter percent, 38 points. Tranny's up a half a percent, 74 points. Gold's up 28 bucks. Silver's up 78 cents. Lights we crude, 651. Natural gas up 6 cents. 30 year treasuries up but only 17 ticks right now. Trade out at 142.19. Lead the charge dollar wise. You've got Amazon up 46 bucks. Booking Holdings, 42. Mercado Libre, 25. Genius Group up 21. And Tesla's up 18. To the downside, Biorad Laboratories, 2 and 3 tenths percent, 13 points. Thermo Fisher Scientific down 11 bucks, nearly 2%. IDEX Labs off 10 bucks or 2%. CarMax, 7 bucks, 7%. Danaher Corp off 2.5% or 7 bucks and change. Let's begin by taking a look at, uh, well, we, we already were, you, each of you, those of you that have listened to the show long enough, know that yesterday gave you one of those signals, one of those signals that we would see a bounce or a bottom. What are those signals? Those are the signals by these blue arrows here. Those are where we have one day rates of change above a plus 10% level. Yesterday's, I believe, was about 13%. Does it matter the extent of the percentage above plus 10? It does not. It just matters whether it's above plus 10%. And if it is, then you're going to expect or anticipate a overnight or perhaps a bounce that starts in the morning. You're going to expect and what you're looking for there is you're looking for a pattern. Now, the preferred pattern is the road's momentum indicator signal. And the reason why that's the preferred pattern, let me go ahead and switch charts, is because that pattern identifies when a market is stretched. So you're looking for the biggest potential bounce out there, bounce to bottom. We don't, we never know which one it's going to be. And uh, so that's the pattern that gives you that best stretch. And what we're really focused on here is just the ES mini, the spot volatile index, just dealing with the S&P 500. And this, in our case here, the ES mini for the overnight pattern that we're looking at. So as we take a look at the ES mini, uh, this formed at uh, 130, it confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator uh, bottom. It had already confirmed a TD9 count at uh, 1230 in the evening, and then it was off to the races. Now off to the races actually took us first, we had a TD9 count that topped on bar, on bar falling uh, bar number nine, that took place at six o'clock this morning. Then we saw a sideways move up until the release of the uh, CPI data at 8.30. Uh, and then that went ahead and negated that signal, went ahead and made another TD9 count top right at breakdown resistance, 44.65.25. Now what we have here is we have price trading below support both the green oscillator and change line, and on 30 minute, the bottom of its profile, which is 44.29. Now, this candle session doesn't end for 20 more minutes, but uh, you've already got two consecutive bars that are below the bottom of that profile. This suggests that we should see the ES mini pull back even further, and this price target should be 44.05. That is the breakout level for the 30 minute time frame for the ES mini. 
We look at the other equity future contracts out here. We'll see no real topping signal in the NQ, meaning a topping pattern. The topping pattern was really being controlled by the ES and the Russell 2000. So the Russell 2000 creates a TD9 count top. It does that at 1030. In its case, price is still consolidated with inside its profile. Below the green oscillator and change line, we would not be surprised to see it move back to 1993.60. If price were to close below 1993.60, then we're looking for a move down to 1976.60. That is its breakout level. In the case of the Dow, don't really have a, a topping signal per se. It does show roads meant to indicator signal, but no bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. The price is just consolidating with inside its profile out there. So you got two uh, instruments, the uh, YM, the Dow. The RTY, the Russell, consolidating with inside their 30-minute profiles. The ES and the NQ are suggesting lower price, and that will remain the case unless we see price close above that green oscillator and change line. In the case of the ES Mini, that's at about the 44.31 level, and inside the NQ, it's at the 14.115 area. Now, that's what the daily or the intraday charts are suggesting to us. So the, the signal that came from the spot volatile next last night, at four o'clock that pattern is done and complete out there the bounce is uh, you know it's been a, been a healthy bounce i was surprised to see it get all the way up to that second level nonetheless that it did now when it got up to that second level what does that do to the daily time frame charts you know that's an excellent uh, question so let's go find out what it's uh, the messages of the uh, daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts and momentarily you'll see the es mini in the upper left hand corner now in its case, uh, today is going to become bar number eight. Now, bottoms can form on bar number eight of a TD9 count. You still need bar number nine to complete. In order for bar number nine to complete, that's assuming today completes bar number eight, tomorrow you would need to see a close below 44.95. The price were to close above that, it will the, the pattern will disappear. It doesn't negate the pattern. The pattern just simply vanishes. You wouldn't have a bottom signal. Same real uh, game plan here in the NQ. Today is going to be bar number seven. So you could get a TD9. So you could get a TD9 count bottom inside the ES, the NQ, uh, between today and uh, Thursday out here. In the case of the Dow, it would be between a day, between today and tomorrow. But today is a really key session for the Dow Equity Future contract. Today is going to become bar, well, may become bar number nine. Why do I say may? Because price has to close below 34,361. We're at 34, three, we just hit 34,361 just as I said that. Talk about being able to track something in your life. How does that work? But here's the deal. Those of you that are bulls or are thinking of buying this bottom out here, what you really want to see is you do not want to see the Dow equity future contract perform well. You want this to close below 34,361. Why? Because then you would get bar number nine. And then you might have the bottoming signal that takes place between today and Thursday with the ES and Q needing to still get their ninth bar, and that would be tomorrow. And then we could potentially be off to the races. The danger sign here comes from the Russell 2000. The danger is that if we take a look at its oscillator and change line, which changed colors three or four bars ago, typically we don't see that level get tested until we get a valid bottoming signal, which we have not gotten inside the Russell 2000. Well, I, I probably could take that back. There is an A to B equal CD to the downside that we'd be confirmed with today's bullish and golf, bull sash candle. But here's the point I really wanted to make. Price, price rejected that red oscillator and change line at 2028. So the Russell is signaling to you and I right now, as long as price does not close above that line, that it still wants lower price. Lower price could be all the way down to the bottom of consolidation, or it could be just making a TD9 count. See Roads with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to a couple of questions that have come in. Phone lines are open, by the way, 877-927-6648. The first question coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty write, and happy taco, two for Tuesday. Please give us thoughts on the XLF as bank earnings begin tomorrow. In addition, the XLE update. Any thoughts there? Thanks, Hector and Patty. Let's begin by taking a look at the XLE. So what we know here... As the XLE is on a strong tear, on a monthly basis, it negated its uh, TD9 count pattern. It uh, negated that back in January of 2022. You can see the price is up at a uh, prior resistance level of 79.11. That's a TD9 count breakdown area. Of course, it's a monthly chart. It's only the uh, 12th. But right now, things look pretty promising and are signaling to us, Hector and Patty, that price wants to make a run for the highs out here from back in January of 2014. That's what the monthly chart is communicating to us. We take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart negated its TD9 count top. I did that uh, several weeks ago. Um, and uh, this is only in bar number seven. That suggests that it wants to continue to move higher. It, too, is taking out a TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 73.36. So the weekly and the monthly look very good. What's going on on the shorter term basis, meaning the daily time frame chart? Well, on the daily chart, you need to see a close above 80.22. 80.22 is the uh, TD9 count top, was bar number eight, it was wave number seven. And if price can close above that, then you'll have the daily lining up with the weekly, lining up with the monthly, and it's off to the races to the upside. We don't have that signal just yet. We do really from the weekly and the monthly, but we don't have that from the daily time frame. Intraday, there's not really a whole lot else for me to provide to you. So that's our take. 80.22 is really going to be your key number when it comes to the XLE. Uh, let's go ahead and see if I can get this thing to populate here with the XLF. I've got a number of windows that are open, so this will be interesting to see just how long it takes. But we take a look at the XLF while we're waiting for that to populate. Let me get that going on my other background screens. You're uh, trading right now at uh, 37.70. And uh, 3770, Hector and Patty, takes us with inside its daily profile. And uh, so we will begin there. The daily profile got support at 3749, resistance at 3850. I'll just simply expand this out. We'll start from the daily. If we take a look at any kind of bottoming patterns on this move lower, the answer is we don't have one. At least we don't have one just yet. Come on, expand. 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 It's not expanding. Why is that? Hmm. That's a stumper for Stevie. 
Uh, geez, I can move the I can move the darn thing. What the heck? Try it one more time. All right, we won't try it. So I'm just going to try to narrate it. Hopefully, you can see it. What you really are looking for here? Oh, there we go. So now it's going to do it. What you're really looking for here, Hector and Patty? Well, number one, at a minimum, you've got to see it close above that red oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 37.93. You'd really prefer to see by tomorrow price spike below bar number six. Bar number six is all the way down at, or the low of that bar is 36.98. If we were to do that, then you could get a TD9 count. Today's going to become bar number nine. I take that back. Today's close is suggesting you're not even going to have a TD9 count. And maybe this is an A to B equals CD to the downside of the XLF. Because in order for today's bar to form, bar number nine, you've got to get a close below 37.55. And uh, you're at 30, well, you're 37.68. So it's doable, but you've got to see the XLF close lower to maintain the TD9 count. And even if you do get bar number nine today, it still has to spike below that bar number six out there. So I don't have the warm fuzzies here, at least for the daily time frame for the XLF. The XLF on a weekly basis, consolidating with inside its profile between 36.08 and 40.21. You've got a TD9 count. I've got a Rose Mintum indicator top on the uh, monthly time frame. So the monthly's got a top, but it's neutral signal because price is above the top of its profile. Consolidating inside the weekly time frame. The daily is questionable. So uh, I don't think the XLF is ready for prime time. Now, maybe it is. Maybe earnings will change that picture. But as we can take a look at the uh, charts right now, that is not the signals or the signal that we are getting, Hector and Patty. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question comes from uh, Alton. And Alton writes in and says, hey, Steve, thanks for looking at UNG. It has had a tremendous run the last month or so. Do you see any topping signals or shall it continue going higher? Have a great day. Well, so to answer that question, UNG, the first thing you've got to understand is which contracts, which natural gas contracts, that is, are make up the UNG. I don't know the answer to that. I know that one of the contracts is certainly going to be the May contract, but it very likely is uh, rolling over to June. Right now, I'm just simply going to take a look at the May contract for natural gas for you. What do we know about the May contract? Well, let's start with the larger time frame. The larger time frame is the monthly time frame. The monthly time frame here, this is a continuous contract. We can see that price is above a, uh, the highs out here from February of 2014. And that suggests that it wants to continue to run higher. We do not have any kind of topping signal on a monthly chart. As we look at the weekly chart, you're only in bar number seven that's going to complete this week. So no topping signal here. That suggests that we should continue to see higher prices. That is a signal that you're getting from the daily time frame chart. The daily time frame chart had a TD9 count top. That pattern was negated with yesterday's close because price closed above the high of bar number one. That tells you you have a strong momentum move to the upside, Alton. So there is no reason to jettison your position. The fact that you're in it, kudos to you. I would stay in that position. If we take a look at some short-term time frame charts out here, we are seeing signs of price pulling back. The 30 minutes just got a consolidation inside its profile. The 60 minute, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price could, not saying it will, but it could get back to 650. Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the two hour chart 6.27 is its target roads mint indicator top on the 240 642 is its target out there and that's uh basically all that we've got so the daily weekly and monthly uh, look like they want to continue higher the intraday charts wouldn't be surprised to see it pull back just a, a tad uh, so i do hope that helps you out there's one more chart here that we can go take a look at We'll switch over to my black background screens. Uh, the ones that are going to pop up are not we're going to look at. We're actually going to go to the uh, uh, natural gas uh, table that I've got the longer term charts on. So if you give me a moment, we'll populate that. In this instance here, for whatever reason, it's a good reason. I just can't tell you what that reason is. Um, is the May contract is populating enough for me to get back into the 2010 area. I have no idea how this did it, but it did do it. So the cool thing here is we can see that price above the 615 level. Those are the highs out here from back in 2013. 
And now that suggests that price should go target around the 803 level. The point here is there's no topping signal. Now you could get a, if you got a bearish reversal candle on a weekly basis, that would change things. But we don't have that as we speak right now, Alton, at 125 in the afternoon on April the 12th. So again, kudos to you for that trade. I would definitely stay with it out there. Uh, let's see if we've got any other requests out here. We've got one from David H. in uh, Panama City. And David wants to take a look at LRCX. I might have that already. Let's see. I think we looked at that yesterday. So I'm going to go to my radio charts and hope that it's still there. Is it there? It is not. Nice going, Steve-O. So let's do this here. Let me get LRCX going on uh, some other charts. And as long as we're on the black background, I'm going to go to my three-panel chart. Let's see what we have going on out here. I believe that is LAM Research, LRCX. And it is. So I think we discussed that it was would be more ideal if Lamb Research could get down and test and reject the swing point for March 14th, which is 466.06. Hasn't done that today, but I'll get those other charts up on our screen and we'll go take a look at Lamb Research when we get back from this break. For David in Panama City. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. All U.S. indices trading the upside. Dow's up 105. S&P is 16. Slight change in game plan here. We have call ahead seating. That means we're going to go out to Bob in Denver. Bob, thanks for calling. 
Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Great. It's Ron. Oh, it's Ron, Ron in Denver. Denver. Thank R-O-N. you. Thank you. I, I, I would be able to. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I think the uh, okay. the guys in the production room. I was uh, calling about Nordic American Trust. I, I, I sold it. It uh, ran up. And uh, I mean, I bought it here a while back, and it ran yes. up there. I got out of two eighty five on a third of the position. Okay. And I wanted to get back in. I, I missed it this morning, and I just wondered what uh, I'd like to buy. I'd like to get back in plus more shares. Um, you know, they're they're leasing their their ships. They used to get ten thousand a day. Now they're getting over fifty thousand a day on their oil ships. Sure. And their cost is eight thousand a day. So I, what, uh, what Nordic American Tankers uh, has done a couple of days ago, really yesterday, it confirmed a TD9 count top. It was the uh, bar from, really confirmed a TD9 count top and a Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. Now, what Price did today is it uh, – po- so when you get a topping pattern, what we look for is for Price to pull back to levels of support. In this case right now, we're on at 131 in the afternoon. Two levels of support have been tested. Two levels of support have been rejected. That's a bullish sign. What that, but because we have a top that's in place, its signal for the daily time frame is neutral. The first potential buy point was at about 246. Price got down to, I think, about 247 uh, this morning out here. No, it got actually to 246. And 246 is the value of the oscillator and change line as we speak right now. 255 is the top of the daily profile. Price is trading at 260. So those are your two levels of support that were rejected out there. Uh, And that may have been the place for you to add to your position. Hard to say because we're really in a neutral position and we won't get out of that until price takes out the highs. Ron, any questions about the daily time frame before I take a look at any of the other time frames? No, uh, thank you very much. It makes sense. Okay, okay. I'll, uh, yeah, so let's uh, look at the yeah, weekly. Um, I think, so if it gets back around 255, maybe I'll add some then. Yeah, well, let's see. The weekly, let's just take a look at the other time frame charts here. The weekly, uh, nothing uh, nothing there that sticks out at us that we have to be concerned about. Monthly chart, nothing that sticks out of us to be concerned about. So I'm just going to look at the intraday chart. So interestingly enough, on an intraday time period. Uh, this went ahead and top with a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. It was a shooting star candle that had formed out there. And then what Price did uh, during the day today was a pullback at 10 o'clock right to the breakout level. And that was at 254. So yeah, you now know, what you're, you're, you're not, your charts aren't showing on mine. Is it, oh, there really? You are. Okay. Yeah, it must have been a slight delay. Sorry about that. Uh, maybe you're watching on Tiger TV. Tiger TV might have a slight delay. Ron, for one dollar, you can uh, be a uh, member of the uh, Tiger's Den, and you'll get those charts. And I think they've been even at higher quality out there. Just something to consider. But the chart that you are looking at is a 30-minute time frame chart, creates a valid top, and pulls all the way back to its breakout level. So now that the oscillator and change line had changed colors. The question is, here's what you'll be looking for. Let's just say that this is only a, a uh, so on a bounce from here, if this is only a counter trend bounce, price would find resistance between 269 and 271. So you're really looking for price to get above 271 to give you a signal that, okay, maybe you can go ahead and add to your position. If not, we could see lower price out there. Support is held. I don't have any signal to suggest we're going to get the lower price just yet, but I also don't have any signal to say that we're going to get the higher price. Does that make any sense? Kind yeah, of like it the, does. I uh, so I'll have to watch and see if it either breaks out above 271, which means uh, I can stay with it. Uh, yeah. You know, but if it drops off a little bit, I can. I, I think I will add to it. I like the story long term. Sure. Um, so here's how you'd play it. Here's how you would play it. If price pulls back, you've got to say you've got an order hanging out at 246, 247, somewhere around there. And that adds to your position. You're already in the money. Uh, you said you already got, you already took off a, a good portion of the uh, trade here. And I would uh, say a price, yeah. I would say a price closer below 240, just to come up with a value out there. I'd probably jettison that position. Um, and especially the, the portion that you added, because that would be signaling to us that Nordic American tankers could easily pull back to 214. Or even more easily pull back to 193 to 188 out there. So, okay. 
the signals as we speak right now, Ron, are neutral, and that makes it a little bit difficult to, um, and I was hoping that we would see something different on an intraday chart with price pulling back to a level of support. I was looking to see something on the intraday chart. So we don't see that, and that just says we just need more information or we just have to be cautious here. So you still hold some position. You had it. You had a nice profit. I'd just be watching this uh, this 246-ish type area and uh, see see how things play out. Super. Thank you very much for your information and your help. Appreciate that. Uh my Thank pleasure, you, and uh, and thanks for letting me call you Bob for the uh, for the day, but we won't we won't we won't get that wrong next time. I hope. Thanks, Ron. Always good to hear from okay, you. Okay, thank you, sir. You bet. That was Ron in Denver. Now let's go back to uh, Lamb Research, LRCX. Uh, David was uh, waited with bated breath out there. So let me get the uh, which screen do I have up? Yeah, the black background screen. So LRCX. Let's populate this. Strategic pause to get a swig of water technical term out there swig that is and uh oh this is necessary how did i get off of that question son of a gun where'd it go my apology give me just a moment here what the heck i must have accidentally deleted the question well i know it's about lamb research so i'm just going to give you my take on lamb research and see what it's doing and here we here we go. Lamb Research should form a bottom today, and it's on the bar following bar number nine. The last bottom out here in uh, Lamb Research was the bar following bar number nine on March the 14th. Price is pulling back into that swing point. I believe it's with lighter volume. We're going to confirm that here right this very moment. And the volume today is 752,000 shares going against 1.6 million shares. So, yeah, it's pulling back with light volume. What we don't have is a test and rejection of that swing point, which should either be the top or the bottom of the swing point. We're still inside it. So what do you want to do from here? Look, you could go ahead. I, what I would do is uh, you want to take a trade here. I'd go ahead and enter that trade now. I, certainly your stop needs to be at least, you got to do the proper position sizing. But even with the proper position sizing, what's going to have a stop well below the low of March 14th, I would close out that trade if price closed below that. That is 466.06. That's coming from the daily chart. The weekly chart out here, does it have any reason for us to get into a position right now? The answer is it does not, other than price pulling back and testing this breakout level 473.32. So that's the only reason to take a trade there, which is a valid reason. Um, it's just we'd prefer to see a better configuration. What do you mean by that, Stevie? We don't like that two weeks ago price test and reject that red oscillator and change line, and it also closed below its bullish structured weekly profile out there. So those are things we don't like to see. What is the larger term chart? The monthly says I've got a Rosemont indicator top and I want to head lower. By heading lower, it says over time, not tomorrow, not the next day, it says it wants to get to 267.10 out here. So you've got the fight between the daily and the weekly. They both can be right. The daily can just simply go ahead and give us some type of a bounce. Where would that bounce take us to? That bounce could easily take us to 545.44, which would be a nice trade. You're at 476 right now. Real quickly on the intraday charts out here, what do you have? you got the beginning of a bottom on a 30-minute chart, Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Same thing on the 65. Well, that was a 60. Uh, same thing on 120. You got a TD9 count out there. So it is definitely trying to form a bottom out there. I do hope that helps you out. Sorry for deleting the message out there. And uh, we'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got uh, one uh, question in the hopper here. This one's coming from uh, Sat P. And Sat writes in as uh, Bitcoin is on count nine. Actually, it's on count number eight, bar number eight out there. But uh, please suggest entry levels for BITO, which is an ETF for Bitcoin. Also, please suggest the entry levels for Starbucks. So you're on bar number eight of a TD9 count. You still need bar number nine to complete tomorrow. It's a likely outcome. And price is pulling back to its breakout level of 38.920. So uh, you want to wait until you get that uh, confirmation. So tomorrow would be the uh, appropriate time. And of course, what we want to see is something similar to what we already have going on in a 30 minute time frame chart. We've got a bottoming pattern. Price ran up to resistance. That was his breakdown level, 45.50. And then basically it gave it up. So it's just kind of consolidating sideways. Could today be the bottom? It could, but we're just not getting the type of signal that we would like on that. So instead, why don't you wait at least for tomorrow? Remember, the TD9 count bottom can form a bar's nine to the bar following nine, eight, nine to the bar following nine out there. Last TD9 count bottom was on bar number nine. That was on February 24th. So Satin, on this one, I'm going to say just sit on this one just for another day or two. And uh, let's take a look at it tomorrow or take a look at it on Thursday. Your next request was to take a look at Starbucks. So as we take a look at Starbucks out here, SBUX is the uh, ticker symbol. you got uh, Howard uh, Schultz uh, back in the uh, saddle again. I guess you have to type in the right uh, symbol uh, there. And as we take a look at Starbucks right now, trading out at 80.54, it is below its daily, weekly, and monthly profile level. So it uh, doesn't look like they're having a big party over there. But let's go see if we can find a uh, bottoming signal. You're asking for an entry price. We first have to find a bottoming pattern. We don't have that. Now, in the case of Starbucks, it did form back on February the 24th, or March 14th, I take that, did form a bottom on March 14th. I was bar TD9 count bottom. You're on bar number seven today. Price is pulling back into that level. So uh, what you'd like to see is another TD9 count form. The earliest that would take place is tomorrow. So it would be between Wednesday and Friday. So look to see if we do get that uh, TD9 count out here. We're in some narrow range bars as we speak right now. But wait for the pattern to form. And then we can come back and take a look at where is the bottom uh, price out there. And what you would be doing is you'd look at intraday time period. So no entry price right now. And the reason is because we don't see a bottom signal, anything that's worthy enough for you to step into a trade as we speak right now. Price is pulling back into that swing point from uh, March the 14th, which had about 19 million, 18.2 to be exact. And you're pulling in with 4.0. 
1.6 today. So we like that setup. But let's go look at the weekly chart because you're trading below weekly and monthly profile. So we need to understand those as well. Let's go take a look at those. I somehow negated that, but let's go take a look at it. The weekly chart. So what you like about this is it's triggered a roads momentum indicator signal. Now, what you like about that is you want to see some type of bullish reversal candle, which would say, you know, maybe next week or the week after. And most certainly you need to see it close above its red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 8807, to give you the all clear signal. The monthly chart out here, what does this tell us for Starbucks? It formed a roads momentum indicator top. Uh, you're going to form bar number eight, but you still have to spike. So this is really suggesting, Sat, that you're, you might you might be sitting on your hands here for a little while with regard to Starbucks. You might might be um, this is week and what I'm saying here is really next week uh, might be ideal now will that line up with the uh, daily bar number seven today is Tuesday eight nine ten so you wins uh, by Friday would be the seven eight nine. yeah oh it could be Monday yeah so you could on Monday so that'd be nice because what you'd like to see is you would like to see you would like to see some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a roads momentum indicator bottom for the uh, daily for the weekly time frame out there and on the monthly that's what we're looking at you'd like to see this poke below the lows of last week because then that, not not this week you'd like to see it do it next week because that would then trigger a td a potential td9 count bottom on the monthly time frame out there so it'd be nice to get a monthly uh, signal for a bottom get a weekly signal for a bottom and then a daily and then you'd be off to the races out there so i think that's what you want to do you want to be patient with uh, Starbucks out there. I hope that information helped you out. Uh, thanks so much for writing, and we'll look forward to reviewing these with you in the uh, next uh, couple of days or so. Now, I believe that is all the questions. I don't think there's anything inside the Tiger's Den. If there was a question inside the Tiger's Den and you had written that in, if you would be kind enough to rewrite that uh, in for me, that would be great. But otherwise, I don't see uh, anything. And uh, someone wants to take a look at Cal. C-A-L is a ticker symbol. You got it. So we'll go take a look at uh, Cal. First, let's go see what Cal is. C-A-L. That is uh, Calaris Inc. And Calaris Inc. is trading above the top of its daily profile. That's good. It's taken on a prior swing point. The prior swing point it's taken on was March 16th. The volume there was uh, 488,000 shares or 192. So you're taking on a swing point with light volume. What's that mean? It means you really would like to clear that in order to suggest that you're headed to higher ground. Consolidated inside the uh, weekly profile, consolidated inside the monthly profile. Why didn't that uh, pop up on my screen? C A L. Stevie's having a little bit of problems here with the white background screen, so I thought I had done what I needed to do. We're just going to have to wait for this. And the questions are, Cal Steve, Cal Steve, charts and comments on Cal. Have a position at 20, some August call options looking to add, suggest entry point. Well, right now, Jimmy, you're just deal dealing with price trying to take out that resistance level. Again, 1.5 million shares. You only have 192,000 shares as we speak right now. So you've got to test rejection. That's why we really want to see what else is going on on those daily charts here for uh, Cal. And uh, do we see anything of significance? We don't. So if you want to add to your position, since it's unable to bust out the highs, at least it appears so far, levels of support are between are at 2002 and 2065. That's from the daily time frame chart. So those would be the places to add to your position. You're already in at 20, so this would be pulling back to that 20 level out there. If price were to close below that, you'd be looking at 1908. Weekly time frame chart for Cal. Well, on a weekly basis, this is struggling with its red oscillator and change line, which is been unable to close above so this is going to be really important to you jimmy on a weekly basis if cal on a weekly basis can close above 2110 that's going to be a positive uh that's going to be a real positive it's not a guarantee but it's a real positive you can see how the oscillator and change on is acted as resistance now that positive would then say your next battle would be a 2210 and your next battle above that would be a 24.25. So you're really looking, uh, you know, for the weekly to prove itself to you. Short term, I've just got the 30-minute time frame chart. You have a roads momentum indicator top. Short term, this suggests that we should see price pull back to 21, 20.89 or 2079. So that's what the short-term time frame charts are telling us. Uh, the daily tells us no volume as it takes on that swing point. Expect some type of retracement. And that's what the intraday charts are communicating to us. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to what Cal is doing. 
And, uh, and if there's any other information that you need, just please let me know. You like white background chart, good, very helpful. You're patient on it, perfect, okay, excellent. Uh, so, uh, well, we got about uh, 20 seconds before we go to a break. Let me just check, see if there's any other requests. Oh my goodness, what do we have? Well, we've got a couple out here. Um, let me see, this one is on uh, NVIDIA. Well, that usually comes in from Eddie. NVDA and Eddie is actually one of the people who wrote in, but he wasn't asking about NVIDIA this time. He was asking about the euro. So you got NVIDIA out here. Let me see uh, NVDA. Is there any kind of TD9 company or anything? Else? Let me see what we've got on the daily time frame chart here. Go ahead and populate. So today is going to be a TD9 count bottom signal out here. And that says we've got to watch today's low because if price gets below that, it says it's headed lower out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So JT's question from New York about NVIDIA is, do we see any more downside action or is this a buy? So when you get that TD9 count, you know what we like to do? Here's the daily time frame. So let's get this populated here. The, today is the bar following bar number nine. That makes the trade fairly easy uh, because if you see a close below today's low, whatever that ends up being, tells you about a significant uh, downside move out there, a likely significant downside move. Now, when, right now we're trading at the low of the session, so we're not going to see any kind of a bottom signal, but you'd want to see some type of bottoming pattern. 
on the 30 minute chart a 65 a 130 a 195 you know and those are just patterns that we don't have right now so what we don't have and what you'd like to see is a confirmation of a bottom on a short term time frame and your question is do we see lower price i don't know see if we see lower price but i do know is at this stage here what we don't see is any kind of short term confirmation of a bottom to match up with the daily time frame so i hope that helps you out uh, jt thanks so much for writing in we're going to finish out the show with eddie in boca raton and eddie's questions here uh, for the most part are dealing with the uh, euro and some of uh, what i shared with um Oh, with viewers when I did the segment on Tom's show yesterday with uh, Basil out there. So I have just about uh, 30, 45 seconds out here. And I just want to cover, I guess, a couple of things. The first thing is the U.S. dollar index, because when I shared this information with, with Eddie, he was surprised. And I think if he's surprised, many other people are surprised out there. You know, you hear all those gold commercials, you know, dollar down, gold up. It, it, don't listen to those guys, because they're full of everything you could possibly imagine. Dollar down, gold up. The dollar bottomed in 2011. This is a quarterly time frame chart for the U.S. dollar index. And the U.S. dollar index right now is headed higher. It's up above all kind of profiles out here. And all it needs to do is headed for the highs from January. That's up at the uh, 103.56 level. If we can take that out, it's headed to 109.47. Is gold higher than where it was in 2011? That would be my question to you out there. The real issue here with regard to the general markets, and Eddie, we'll talk about this tomorrow, just didn't have enough time today, is really with regard to what's going on inside of the euro. And if the euro cracks 105, closes below 105, we will see a gigantic move to the upside in the U.S. stock market out here. That's what I was saying yesterday. Tomorrow, we can talk about it further. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear is up next. Tom O'Brien will take us home. Have a terrific Tuesday.